The Lazarus Project is a new show coming to TNT this June, and I first became interested in it because it's written by Joe Barton, who wrote The Ritual, which I think is a really good, underrated David Bruckner film. It's an indie horror film. You should check it out. It's creepy and weird, and I really like it. And this show is about a top-secret organization that has the ability to make time go backwards, and their goal is to prevent mass extinction events. And I feel like it's really important for full disclosure here. I wanted to see the show because of Joe Barton's involvement, but I wasn't really planning on making a video of it. TNT did reach out to me and send me the first three episodes, and they asked me if they could sponsor a review of them. And I said, well, I mean, I'll gladly review your show, but only if I like it. I'm not going to say good things about something just because you're sponsoring me, and I'm definitely not going to make really negative content anymore because I announced back in October that I, uh, 2021, that I wouldn't do that anymore. So I really feel like it's important to say that TNT sponsored this video, but I would not have made this video if I hadn't watched the first few episodes and gotten kind of wrapped up in it. It is a really good show. The pilot is actually really great. The production value for it is extremely surprising. There's a chase scene near the end of the pilot that really did feel like it was right out of a feature film. What I also liked about the show is how they handled where our hero is when time reverses. They found very entertaining ways to throw him into scenarios that keep changing when he loses what end up being about six months or so. One of them, he gets thrown right back into a situation with his girlfriend that's very awkward, and it's just uh, very interesting the way they handle it. There's a lot of fun moments like that where he's forced to realize he just lost six months, but in the middle of something where you'd rather not have that knowledge while doing it, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But the first episode is really good at putting our hero in a place where you feel like he's been given all of this incredible power and knowledge and an ability that no one else really has except for a handful of people, but then you give him all of that and then you force him to come to terms with potentially losing what is most important to him, and even though he has the ability to maybe fix it, he can't for various reasons I won't reveal, and so you put your hero in a very difficult choice which is always very fun for episodic TV. You have to know how this guy is going to get out of this thing. How will he fix this? Or can he even fix it? Should he even try? When it comes to time travel or time loop movies, they do feel kind of old at this point. But this show has, at least so far, what I've seen anyway, a fresh look at it in that you're watching people who have this ability, but they can only use it in specific moments. And it's not like they're trapped in some time loop where they have to get out of the same day. They're looking at times in which the world might have actually ended and trying to fix those times. And so how do they deal with that when they have abilities that could potentially allow them to solve a lot of real world problems or even personal problems, but they only will use it if it's truly going to be a billions dead kind of situation. As far as things about these first few episodes that could have been better, it's strange because parts of it felt extremely high budget, like that chase sequence, for instance. Some of the visual effects are fantastic, and the production values at times are fantastic, but then other parts of it feel like they've cheapened out a bit. Like there's a sequence at a celebration, and there's a bunch of people, but not quite enough. And you feel like they're trying to fill the frame with just not enough background actors. There's moments like that where you can feel like the budget wasn't put in the right spots or that it was at least used for things like chases and less like other scenes like that. There's also a sense in a few scenes where maybe they didn't quite have enough time to get through them. And of course, you know, I've talked to a lot of people who write television and oftentimes they don't. They don't get as much time as filmmakers do for movies. And even filmmakers for movies tell you, we didn't have enough time. So sometimes in TV, you got like, one or two takes, three takes, whatever, you gotta move on because you've gotta film 10 pages in a day or whatever. And it does feel like that sometimes throughout these first few episodes that they're sort of running to catch up a little bit and figure out what their speed is or the momentum. But at the same time, I did find the show very entertaining. I found the performances very good and I am very intrigued at where it left me off. So you can tune in to The Lazarus Project Sundays on TNT. It's also available to stream on the TNT app. I think the show has a lot of potential. A plot like this, 
can go all different types of places. They're setting up characters in these first few episodes that have a lot of backstory that's very rich, and I imagine they're going to continue to flesh those characters out and give them more chances to shine. But I also just think that the idea of a time reversal to fix only specific problems could create a lot of drama if they decide to perhaps make characters use that when they shouldn't. Because I think one of the most thrilling things about the show is the exploration of what people do with new tech that is a great invention and will help us, but is of course always eventually going to be used in a negative way. And I think that that's where this show could potentially become great if they go down that path. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.